Hi, my name is Caitlin Wallace and I teach math on Team 7A. Um, here's my contact information if you want to jot it down or you can um, print this presentation out. Please don't ever hesitate to contact me with any questions or concerns. Um, so if there's ever anything you're wondering about or, or need help with, please let me know. So what do we cover in seventh grade math? Um, we do go deeper on a lot of topics that students have seen before. Uh, integers, ratios, fractions, decimals, percents, equations. So if students say, oh, this is easy, this is review, we've done this before, yes, it starts out that way, um, but then we go deeper, we build onto it, we develop um, some new skills, and then there's also going to be topics that are brand new, some geometry topics, inequalities, probability, proportional um, relationships. So it's a blend of things where we build on what they already know and some new stuff. I teach sections of both regular 7th grade math and pre-algebra. So here's a few things just about pre-algebra. Um, you can read through this. Pre-algebra, the goal is to prepare students to be successful in algebra in 8th grade. Um, so we cover everything from 7th grade, but then also bring in some 8th grade topics so that they're not missing out on content that they need before algebra. Um, so we go we go a little bit faster. We have higher expectations, a little bit you know bigger workload, um, more responsibility and studying on their own. Basic skills have to be really strong, um, and then most students who take pre-algebra this year will go into algebra next year. Um, but we also look at other factors, including um, their grade, their placement test score, and different things for placement in eighth grade. In both classes, in all my sections, I do something called flipping. And if you haven't heard of flipping before, um, that's where I send home video notes as homework. So those are YouTube videos that I've recorded and posted. And then we have more time in class to do homework and practice and ask questions and group work and things together while we're here in the classroom. So I would say this class is about 75% flipped. Most of the chapters have maybe five to six videos that go kind of along with each section in the book that we cover. And then um, those will be homework and we spend more time in class doing practice together. So I wanted to make sure I showed you how to get to the videos. We do have a team website that's listed here. If you go to that team website, you'll see my name. Um, listed. If you hover over that and select the correct hour, then it'll open up a page where you can see all of the chapters listed. And if you click on each of those chapters, a new page will open with links to all of the different videos in that chapter. So a few more important things about the video notes. Um, I copy a packet at the beginning of each chapter that has all of the notes for students to kind of use as a template as they watch throughout the whole chapter. Um, make sure that you use the team website like I just showed you to get to the videos. If you just search on YouTube or try to subscribe to me or something like that, there are old videos that are incorrect or that I've updated. So I want to make sure you're watching the correct version. So make sure you go to the team website to the links. Make sure you actually play the sound. YouTube does have closed captioning. Um, or a lot of students just mute it and play their music in the background. Um, but then you're missing all the explanation as I go over the examples. So make sure you have the sound on and you're listening. I also include practice in each video. So pause it, really do the practice. And once you have it done, then you can hit play again and, and check over the answers as, in the rest of the video as we go over it together. But it's important that you're really doing that practice to make sure you understand it. And it's okay to have questions. Um, the videos are just an introduction. We're always going to go over it more in class together. So don't feel like if you're still confused after watching the video that something's wrong or you have a problem. Um, it's, it's great to have questions when you come in after watching the video. Bring those questions to class and then we're going to go over it all more together. I know technology can sometimes be frustrating or there can be, be glitches, so I always try to give multiple days and um, advance warning of when the videos are due so you can plan ahead. Uh, I try to allow students who don't have access at home to do it here at school during homeroom or lunch. I have a few Chromebooks in my room that students can use. You, I leave the videos posted all the time so you always have access to go back and rewatch them. And then I also try to post answer keys and notes and reviews and other things that might be helpful for each chapter. 
So something really important about the videos, um, if you miss a video or don't, or you haven't watched a video on the day that it's due and that we're going to be talking about that section in class, it's just like being absent in any other class. You're going to miss the explanation and the instruction um, and the examples and the practice, so you'll probably be behind. Um, so just keep that in mind. The videos aren't really extra. They're a really, really big part of the teaching and the instruction in the class. Okay, so our textbook is the Big Ideas Math textbook. There's a website that goes with it. Um, students all have their own online account that we've been setting up in class, but I wanted to show you some of the really good features that you can get to through the online book. So when you log in, uh, you can download the app, you can download the book, you can get to an like a dynamic ebook version that has different features I'll show you and there's also different review handbooks and things that have answer keys if there's some skills you want to go back and review. This is the ebook when you log in so this is a random section in the book but you can see the different examples that are in the textbook but they also have these video um, little play buttons next to each example. This opens up a video of somebody explaining and working out another example like each one. So that's a really good place to go if you say, oh, I just need to see that one more time or I forget how she explained it in class. Let me watch another example. And then something else on the ebook, if you log in, are these progress checks. So every couple sections in the book, there's a quiz, but you can also log in and get to an online version that has answers and it will check it and kind of go over it with you. So if you're looking for extra practice, this is a good place to go. Students should have their login information written down, but if you lose it or forget it, um, you can still get to the free version of the online textbook. Um, there's a place to get to that. It doesn't have all the features, but it's still there if you need a textbook to do your homework at home if you forget your book. Okay, something that might be different from Farms is that at Oar Creek, we use the four-point grading scale. Um, so I still use percents as a general guideline. Your percent on a test or a quiz kind of tells me what four point number to record. And then this is what you'll see in the grade book when you look at grades online. So it might di uh, differ slightly between different teachers, um, but we kind of use, in general, this is the general, general framework for it. Okay. Um, I wanted to point out that for things like homework and effort and completion, if there's no work, it's, I'm probably going to record a one or a two even if you have all the answers written down, just because it's so important in math to show your thinking and your reasoning and how you got to the answer and what the steps and the process are behind it. So just note on the four point scale, like a 2.0 doesn't mean two out of four or 50%. A two point on the four point scale means, you know, not there yet, making progress, still some errors, somewhere in the, you know, 70s um, as a general guideline. So for this class, I do um, weigh assessments heavily because I want grades to reflect what students really know and can do on their own. So you can see that 90% of the grade in the class comes from tests and quizzes, um, mostly tests at 80%. And then 10% for everything else, which I call effort scores. And those are just the practice. So, so those are homework completion, effort, participation, in-class assignments, things like that. So in homework, um, or in this class, homework is really viewed as a chance to practice. So I don't count it as a grade for accuracy. So there's no penalty for making mistakes on homework. Um, it's not collected on a daily basis, but we will always go over it and have time to ask questions, um, look at the answer key, work with a group to fix the ones you got wrong, things like that. So because um, I want final grades to reflect what students really know in the end, um, and because grades are so heavily weighted on assessments, I do offer corrections and retakes. So students can always retake quizzes. If they do corrections on the original, get a parent signature, they have two weeks to come in and do a retake with me and keep the higher score. And then same thing with tests. As long as they've fixed their quizzes along the way, if they have good effort scores, again, they can do corrections on the original test and earn points back on their test scores. Um, to raise their grade and show that they, they do understand the material. Please let me know if your student is spending a lot of time on homework at home. I would always hope that homework is less than 30 minutes. I don't want to assign or give more than 30 minutes of homework per night. Um, so let me know if your student seems to be struggling or always having more than that um, so that we can work together and figure out how to help them. I tell students my number one rule is don't freak out. 
um, just let me know if there's something I can do or if something's not working so that we can find a solution. I try to offer lots of extra help, um, usually twice a week during lunch or other times. But please just let me know before you get really behind or are really struggling so that we can work together uh, to get back on track. And kind of the last thing I want to put up here um, is just how important it is when we check math homework. So I put some tips up here. Um, really have students think as homework as the practice before the game. We have to do the practice to get better at anything, um, and math is no different. Um, and then when we correct homework in class, make sure you're using another color, you're showing the correct work and the answer, and you go back to the ones that you got wrong and figure out how to fix them to make sure you understand it. So ask for help or, or let me know if there's something you can't figure out how to fix so that we can be going over it together. Uh, and then I send a lot of emails out through Parent Portal, through MyStar, the, our grading program. So just make sure we have your email address in there so that we can be in touch. Thanks.